Hi kids, good evening and welcome to Yup Master. Well, in the last lecture, if you remember, we we are going to continue with the topic of tissues in structural organization in animals, and we have reached up till connective tissue. Do you remember? Connective tissue was classified on the basis of the matrix. Remember what was matrix? This the filling between the two cells. All right. Now connective tissue we had seen that on the basis of matrix was of three types. The first being loose connective tissue. All right, where all the substances are just randomly placed. Then is a dense connective tissue where everything is compactly placed. And then with the special types of connective tissue fluids or rather connective tissue matrix, we had specialized connective tissue. Now, for the classification, if you remember, we also divided these the loose into areolar and adipose. Remember those? Then dense was divided into. the dense regular and then the dense irregular which we just started off in the last lecture and finally the specialized connective tissue which is having cartilage bone and blood all right so let us begin today with or rather let us continue with what we left off yesterday in the last lecture that is of dense connective tissue all right now in this dense connective tissue understand that the two major components here are one the cells which are the fibroblasts and two the fibers majorly the collagen fibers all right now when i'm talking about the dense regular when i'm saying regular it means that these fibers and those cells can you see over here all right when we see here this what you see what you are seeing here these are the cells the fibroblast and then these what you are seeing here are the fibers can you see here that the fibers are placed very near each other and very tightly packed and the fibers are parallel to each other this is why i am calling this as dense regular connective tissue so let us see how the irregular one looks like when i say dense irregular connective tissue yes it is make it made of the same components here where there are fibroblasts but we can also see here that the fibers are not arranged in a parallel form as it is over here the fibers here are arranged in haphazard manners all right which is why we're going to call this as dense irregular connective tissue now when the dense irregular connective tissue the biggest example over here would be that of the skin okay so an example of dense irregular connective tissue is the layer of skin which is found all right skin i am not talking about the upper layer remember uppermost layer epidermis that is made up of epithelial tissue but skin also has an underlying dermis layer and that dermis is connective tissue which connective tissue it is dense irregular connective tissue all right now let us see the examples for dense regular now for dense regular connective tissue we have two examples one being a tendon and second being a ligament okay now what is the difference between a tendon and a ligament let's see the first one tendon is a structure which is going to help to join the muscle with the bone can you see this here muscle is here and the bone is here if you imagine just imagine a muscle muscles are generally soft but what work do they do what is the performance it helps in giving strength but did you ever imagine that how can some soft structure give you strength well that's because the muscles which are attached to the bones they are attached with the help of fibers and these fibers are going to help give strength now in our last lecture i explained to you that there are two types of fibers do you remember those they were the white fibers and the yellow fibers the white fibers were made up of a protein do you remember which protein white fiber was made up of a protein called as collagen okay and the yellow fiber was made up of a protein known as do you remember that it was called as elastin collagen helped in giving rigidity giving tensile strength so naturally children if you have a soft muscle and you need strength from it so this tendon which is formed which is connecting that muscle with the bone it is naturally going to be made up of which fiber the white fiber and which protein 
collagen protein all right so a tendon is a structure which attaches the bone to the muscle or the muscle to the bone it is actually nothing but an extension of the muscle and it is formed of bundles of white or collagen fibers all right this fiber that you see here even if you try to you may be able to touch it see look at this here this is your foot bones okay the bones of your leg and these are your foot now behind there behind on top of your uh, heel bone you can feel a small strip like structure and that structure is your tendon okay so the tendon that's mentioned here one of the strongest tendons in our body and it is called as the achilles tendon okay moving over to the moving over to the other side that is of ligament now what is a ligament ligament is a structure which is joining a bone to a bone if you see this diagram here this is the diagram of the hip joint now when we are talking about hip joint joint is always meant to give us flexibility now what do we what structures do we have here one is the hip bone and second is the thigh bone a bone and a bone both are very rigid structures how do we expect them to give us flexibility they both are hard rigid structures so naturally whatever is going to be joining them is a structure which is going to be able to provide flexibility there and this ligament is the structure which helps to join a bone with a bone so this ligament has to be providing a certain amount of flexibility there if we want flexibility then tell me which fibers do we need there don't we need those yellow fibers so these ligament structures that we have they attach to bone to bone and they are formed of bundles of elastic fibers elastic meaning the yellow fibers okay now what do they do function these are going to help to keep those bones in place this is going to help to keep that joint intact okay so if at all there's any movement over there this leads to dislocation so it is those ligaments which is going to be there to prevent any dislocation and it helps in providing flexibility at that region okay so now it is the ligament that is there over here this is called as the hip bone and in the hip bone this is a part of the hip bone which we call as the ilium i l i u m okay that is the ilium and this bone over here which is the thigh bone is also given is the given the name of femur okay the thigh bone is called as the femur so if you have on one side the ilium and the other side is the femur then the ligament which is joining them will be known as the iliofemoral ligament what is it called as the iliofemoral ligament all right so we see here children that tendon is a structure which joins the muscle to the bone and the ligament is a structure which joins the bone to the bone tendon is meant to be providing strength so it's made up of white fibers ligament is meant to be providing flexibility so it's made up of yellow fibers all right now let's see the advantages or let let us just see how they are used and if at all some damage happens what happens there let's see first if at all there is an excessive pull on a tendon excessive pull on a tendon will lead to something which we call as a strain to the muscle okay it leads to a strain have you heard of the word sprain then sprain is actually a is actually a disease or rather it is a a condition where there is an excessive pull on the ligament okay so remember these two words one is the causing of a strain second is the causing of a sprain okay tendon for strain and ligament for sprain how will we remember this t for tendon and t for strain all right so tendon excessive pull leads to strain and sprain is for ligament okay both of these are examples of dense regular connective tissue now so over here in our classification we are uh, we have finished loose we have finished dense connective tissue all right let us move forward towards the specialized connective tissue and we will go we are going to begin now with cartilage okay now cartilage is a structure which is going to provide or rather it is an endoskeleton okay along with bone even cartilage is an endoskeleton but the only difference is that cartilage is not as hard or as strong as bone is 
That's why many a times cartilage is helping to provide certain amount of flexibility in that region. Let's see some examples. Okay. Over here, what is this? Remember femur? Femur was nothing but the thigh bone. Okay. So over here, you can see that femur is a long bone. At the ends of long bones, there's going to be cartilage. Why is there cartilage there? You know that this is a joint and joint requires certain amount of flexibility along with ligaments there there should be other structures also providing flexibility if there is only a bone connected to a bone how can we expect expect any lubrication how can the joint be moving so that's why there is cartilage there to prevent the friction of bones okay also some other locations of cartilage would be the epiglottis okay what is the epiglottis it was a structure which was preventing food from entering into the respiratory tract then your pinna okay even the pinna external ear this is also made up of cartilage all right and last but not the least look at this area here this this is your rib cage okay rib cage you know the whole, all the ribs are made up of bones but do you also know that when you're breathing in or breathing out don't you feel that your chest can is actually expanding and coming back in well if it is only bones how can that movement happen the reason is that the bone in the front area the bone is attached with the help of these cartilages and it is the cartilages which is allowing slight flexibility slight movement so that there can be expansion of the chest all right so that's what cartilage is all about it is a skeleton it is an endoskeleton but it allows a certain amount of expansion or a certain amount of movements all right so this is the epiglottis in action let's see ahead when we talk about the structure of cartilage okay we need to remember one basic word and that word is chondro Okay, that word is chondro. Wherever you have the word chondro, by default, it is going to be related with cartilage. The same way how when, we, when I say the word cardiac, immediately you will know I am talking about the heart. When I say the word nervous, immediately you know I will be talking about the brain. The same way, when I say the word chondro, you need to understand it is talking about the cartilage. Okay, now first and foremost, whenever I have a cartilage in a structure in front of me, it is always going to be surrounded by fibers. And those fibers will be providing protection, which means that there is a layer of fibers all around the cartilage to provide protection now if it is a layer of fibers to provide protection if it is protecting it has to be rigid which are those rigid fibers which allow or which provide strength aren't they those white fibers so white fibers are made up of which protein they are made up of collagen so we see here that all cartilage structures are surrounded by a layer of which fibers white fibers and that layer of white fibers is called as perichondrium why peri the word peri means all around and because it is all around the cartilage we're going to be calling it as perichondrium okay so perichondrium this is surrounding all cartilage structures and what is it made up of it's made up of those white fibers which is the protein the protein is collagen okay so collagen protein all right now at this level of the of the perichondrium will begin the uh, uh, the arrival of the immature cartilage cells now if you remember in the last lecture when we spoke about immature cells we spoke about the suffix which was called as blast okay blast means immature cell so these immature cartilage cells this is going to be called as chondroblast okay eventually they will mature how do they mature you can see over here this outer layer is what we, they are calling as the perichondrium okay that is the perichondrium the cells are over there and we can see that as the cells are going inwards the cells are going to be maturing okay so at the outermost layer we have those immature cells which we know as chondroblast okay as they go in they will mature mature cell i taught you the suffix it was called as site 
okay if the suffix is site and if it is a cartilage cell may i call it as chondrocyte so eventually the chondroblast will mature to form the chondrocytes okay so we see here chondroblast form chondrocytes and it is those chondrocyte which we will call them as cartilage cells if at all any question any mcq comes where they are talking about cartilage cells then we know they are talking about chondrocytes okay these are the cartilage cells now these chondrocytes are located inside the cartilage but not on their own they are located inside small spaces okay if i have a large space okay in this zoology and try to understand the terminologies if i have a large space i'll call it as a cavity i can give it the name coelom also big cavity okay if i have small spaces all right if i have small spaces i will give it the name either a sinus or i may also give it the name lacuna okay so lacuna means that it is a small space and the matrix over here all this green part you are seeing the matrix over there has these small spaces which are called as lacunae and lacunae is the space in which the cartilage cells will be found so we can see that these this if this outer part is the lacuna then inside the lacuna you have those cartilaginous cells all right so all the cells are located inside the lacunae also we see that each lacunae has around 2 to 8 chondrocytes okay 2 to 8 chondrocytes and all those chondrocytes are ultimately going to be half moon shaped cells all right so half moon shaped cells now the biggest question is that when i am talking about cartilage why am i using the word chondro and children the reason behind that is because the whole matrix area all right understand that this matrix area is secreted by the chondroblast okay do you remember when we did areolar tissue fibroblast was secreting the matrix similarly in cartilage the chondroblast is secreting the matrix and the matrix is made up of a protein where protein is called as chondrin protein because of the name because the name of the protein is chondrin anything and everything related to cartilage will be given the name chondro all right so we see here let's remember these pointers which we have done until now first pointer cartilage is made up of is surrounded by the white fiber what was that called as all around peri around the cartilage perichondrium then made up of immature cartilage cells chondroblast chondroblast mature to form chondrocytes the chondrocytes are located in spaces the spaces were called as lacunae and how many cells per lacunae 2 to 8 cells and do you remember the shape of them they were half moon shaped okay and one last thing why was the word chondro used because of the protein present the protein was called as chondrin but who secreted that protein the immature cells which were known as chondroblasts all right now what i'd like you to do is i'd just like you to take a screenshot of this and also i'd like you to write this down in your notebook so you can study further all right so that is the basic structure of a cartilage now ahead we will see can you see here beautiful diagram this is how the cartilage cells look under a microscope you can see here this is the lacunae these are the spaces and these are the cartilage cells inside those spaces okay let's see ahead now we come to the different types of cartilage all right we are going to be seeing some different types of cartilage the first one being hyaline cartilage now this word hyaline basically this word hyaline means glass okay it is a glass like now if i am saying that this is a cartilage which is like glass what is the most important property of gla glass if i tell you isn't it that it is easily breakable so even this cartilage is a cartilage which is very sensitive and it is easy to break okay now let's see where this cartilage is found and let's see first the properties of it first of all it is the weakest cartilage it has got a bluish gel like matrix okay where is it found it's first found at the ends of the ribs okay ends of the ribs you can see over here what we've spoken about here all of these cartilage that we find here these are hyaline cartilage even at the ends of the long bones over here 
all of these cartilages are hyaline cartilage now why would we have a cartilage which is weak if it's weak why was it even made because if at all that cartilage is very strong then how would it allow flexibility it is allowing flexibility because it is lightly weak so that is why there is expansion of the chest so even that type of cartilage is required even your nasal septum okay the the partition which is there between the left and right side of your nose even that is high line cartilage even structures like your voice box which is your voice box the larynx or even structures like the trachea all of these are made up of high line cartilage all right here the important thing you remember high line cartilage and its examples ends of long bones ends of ribs larynx trachea and nasal septum too all right after high line cartilage moving on to the next type the second type of cartilage which is going to be called as fibrous now when i'm saying fibrous cartilage this is made up of fibers but the question is we know that there are two types of fibers the white and the yellow which fibers are here the white fibers so the fibro or the white cartilage these are made up of bundles of collagen fibers remember the protein collagen all right let's see where they are found the first structure they are found in is called as the pubic symphysis now why is it called as pubic symphysis let's see that you know that this is the hip bone one hip bone this is the second hip bone all right when we see these two hip bones this region over here that we are seeing this region here and this region here these regions are known as the pubics okay these are the pubis bones these pubis bones one and two are joint over here okay so when we see that joining there this part here okay this joining part that you are seeing here is nothing but cartilage so if it is cartilage present over there then which cartilage is it it is white cartilage now the main question is why is a cartilage required there just imagine if the bone was joined with a bone then at the level of your hips okay there would be no movement because a bone and a bone there would be no flexibility there then how would you sit down how would you stand up how would you walk how would you run more importantly how would a female deliver a child there has to be a little bit of flexibility there for all of these movements which i just spoke about so that's why over there between those two hip bones there is cartilage present and which cartilage is it it is fibrous cartilage another location would be between two vertebrae if i am saying between two vertebrae may i call these as intervertebral discs okay so you can see over here look at this diagram this is these are all vertebrae and between those vertebrae can you see those disc like structures well these yellow colored disc like structures you are seeing here these are called as intervertebral discs what are they doing in fact these are the reasons why you are able to move your back because otherwise it would be one vertebrae on the other and how could you expect any movements because if a bone and a bone are near each other we'd be scared of friction happening between them which could lead to pain that is why between two vertebrae we have a cartilaginous disc and that cartilaginous disc is going to allow movement allow flexibility there that's why cartilage all right next after fibrous if there was cartilage made up of white fibers then why not of yellow fibers so we come next to the third type of cartilage which we are studying that is of elastic cartilage you can see here that these all here are the elastic cartilage they are the chondrocytes okay these are the chondrocytes here but then can you see all of these fibrous structures here all of these fibers which you are seeing are none other than the elastic fibers elastic fibers means these are the yellow fibers okay so these are having threads of elastic threads present them uh, elastic fibers present there where all are they present they're present in the outer ear okay the pinna in fact this is the reason why you can get your ears pierced imagine if the ear was made up of a bony structure and you went to get it pierced then immediately with that drill or with that machine or the gun that they are putting in naturally the bone would get powdered but because it is made up of cartilage you are able to pierce the ear 
okay so the outer ear then the nose tip the only the tip of the nose is made up of elastic cartilage i told you that the nasal septum that septum is made up of hyaline but the tip is made up of elastic cartilage then this structure over here what was this structure called as didn't we call it as the epiglottis so even that epiglottis is made up of elastic cartilage so the three examples we saw here the outer ear also called as pinna the nose tip and the epiglottis all of these are structures belonging to elastic cartilage okay now let's come up and uh, we'll see a quiz time let's see some mcqs and see whether you're able to solve them or not okay which of the following connective tissue often serves as a support framework for epithelium okay is it areolar is it adipose is it dense regular connective tissue or is it dense irregular connective tissue look at a screenshot from what we had done in the previous lecture where i taught you that if there is connective tissue here okay it is always there because it has to support the epithelium above it this here was an was an example of the skin where upper layer of skin the epidermis was epithelium the dermis was connective so we see here connective tissue is uh, providing to be a framework and over here the correct answer would be areolar tissue all right next the excessive nutrients which are not used immediately are converted to fats and they are stored in where are they stored just tell me fats remember the main word here is storing fats okay is it areolar tissue adipose tissue dense regular or dense irregular naturally we know that adipose tissue the functions of them were it is a source of energy it stores fats it cushions it insulates and it is a solvent for fat soluble vitamins okay so our correct answer over here would be adipose tissue all right okay let's continue now match the columns okay let's see the first column this is a question about the junctions present between the cells we learned this when we did the topic of epithelium so we saw that there were three junctions adhering junctions the gap junctions and the tight junctions now do you remember these let's just try to remember when we talk about adhering junctions these were the ones adhering means cementing holding on the cells with each other okay so let's see the other column which is helping us here helps to stop leak uh, substances from leaking across the tissue do you remember that i told you that this is like as if the cell has got a lid on it and that was with junction that was none other than the tight junction so one over here goes to tight junction let's see the second option it performs cementing to keep the neighboring cells together this is exactly what i told you about adhering junctions the third one to allow some level of communication between the two cells so it helps in facilitating the cells to communicate with each other and what is that that's none other than the gap junctions okay so let's see uh, if we have here the options a b c and d a goes to 2 okay b goes to 3 and c goes to 1 so this is our correct answer all right let's see the next question again match the column a tendon ligament areolar tissue adipose tissue on the other side we have loose connective dense regular dense irregular specialized connective tissue so let's see if you remember this here this was tendon and ligament what we just did okay do you remember this was all white fibers this was made up of yellow fibers but both of these tendon and ligaments were examples for dense regular connective tissue okay what was the example we had for dense irregular it was skin all right so let's go back to our question where match the following so if we see tendon and ligament both of them they both belong to dense regular connective tissue all right areolar tissue and adipose both of them belong to loose connective tissue so you see the options here they have options where only 1 and 2 are in the answers okay so 3 and 4 are completely eliminated here okay so which is that answer over here where there's only 1 and 2 a is 2 all right so a is 2 1 2 and 3 so we eliminate this one b is 2 all right 
A is 2, B is 2. So the answer is either C or D. Now C and D both are 1. So 1 and 1. So our correct option is D over here. Okay. So 3 and 4 are not at all a part of the answer. Alright. Remember one thing. I will I'll tell you that this was a question asked in NEET 2014. Okay. So if you got this question, you are going in a good way. Now, look at this diagram. This is a diagrammatic question over here. Identify the correct figure with its functions. First of all, if you see this figure over here, this is a tissue. Which are the cells present here? Can you see this cell over here? This is a cell and this over here, can you see this big globule and you can see this stained part here which is representing the nucleus. This over here is representing the fat. So this is none other than the, the structure of adipose tissue. Alright, so we see here, this is, which tissue is this? This is adipose tissue. Now we have only one option here which is adipose tissue. But then look at the functions. Let's make sure that the function is correct too because we need to see the functions. It stores fats and act as heat insulators. Is that correct? We know the function. Remember adipose tissue, it behaves as an insulator, right? This is the reason why we are warm-blooded animals because we always have a layer of fat under our skin. No matter how thin or how thick you may be, there will always be a layer of fat over there, okay? Even this was a question which was asked in NEET 2014, all right? All right, one more question. On the basis of mode of pouring their secretions, mode of pouring their secretion. Now, if I'm talking about secretions, it's going to be about glands. So, let's see what are the different types of glands here. Are they classified into two categories, exocrine and endocrine? Well, yes, that's correct. Then, three categories, holocrine, mirocrine, apocrine. That is not about how they're pouring their secretions. Holocrine, mirocrine, apocrine is all about how the secretion or rather what happens to the cell after the secretion comes out. Okay. And the third one, two categories, exocrine and ductless glands. Exocrine are the ones with duct. Ductless are the ones which are endocrine. Okay. So over here, A is correct and C is correct too, which makes our correct answer. That is answer D. That is both A and C. All right. Okay. So this is what we had done. If you remember, exocrine secrete enzymes, endocrine secrete hormones. All right. Okay. Moving on, the outer covering of cartilage is called dash. Do you remember this question, or rather this answer? When I'm talking about cartilage, do you remember which word we're using? Cartilage means we're going to be using the word. Chondro. But now if I'm saying outer covering, if you remember, it was made up of white, white fibers. And because it is going to be all around the cartilage, I'm going to be using for all around, I will use the word peri. All around means peri. And cartilage, I'll use chondro. So peri chondrium. Okay, so let's see our options. The first one only is perichondrium. Look at the other ones. Okay, so our correct option would be perichondrium. Next, the major protein of connective tissue is, is it myosin? Is it collagen? Connective tissue, alright? Is it melanin or is it keratin? So the major protein, remember connective tissue has got fibers and fibroblasts. Okay, now when we're talking about the fibers there, the major protein is collagen fibers. So, the correct answer here would be collagen. Okay, this is a question children which was asked in the AIMS exams. Okay, okay, so now we have now come over, we've, we've completed cartilage from our specialized connective tissue. Let's head on towards to the bone structures. Okay, so when we talk about bone, my first question to you all is, do you think that bone is a living tissue or is it a dead tissue? Just think about it. Keep it in your mind whether you think it is living or whether you think it is dead. And after a little while, I'll come to the same question and ask you the same. All right. Now, first of all, I'd like you to I'd like to tell you that bone is the hardest tissue in our body. Also, we see that uh, when you see the structure of a long bone, 
the long bone is divided into different regions which are those regions the uppermost two regions the extreme upper ends okay when we talk about it the extreme upper ends and the extreme lower ends both of these ends are called as epiphyses what are they known as these are called as epiphyses whereas the whole shaft of the bone over here the shaft of the bone is called as the diaphysis okay so we have two parts of the bone the upper part upper and lower parts which are called as epiphysis the shaft region which is called as the diaphysis all right remember my question whether the bone is a living or a dead tissue we'll come to that in a little while okay now when we talk about bone do you remember we spoke of a layer which is completely covering the cartilage that layer was called as perichondrium because chondro was a word used for cartilage similarly for bone also there is going to be a word which we will be using and that word for bone is called as osteo so when you have the word osteo you know by default we are talking about bone similarly there is a layer of white fibers again can you see this layer over here that layer is a layer which is of white fiber and it is completely surrounding each and every bone of our body since it is all around the bone for all around i will use the word peri and because it is around the bone i'll use the word osteo so this layer is going to be called as periosteum that is a layer of white collagen fibers which is completely surrounding the bone all right now through this periosteum can you see that the blood vessel is piercing through it and entering into the bones which means that bones also require blood vessels if it requires blood vessel do you think it should be living or should it be dead definitely something which requires blood vessel is a living tissue it requires oxygen it requires nourishment that's why there's blood supply so the answer to our question would be that bone is a living tissue all right okay so now let's continue we have heard all these years that bone is made up of cartilage made up of cartilage made up of made up of sorry bone is made up of calcium made up of calcium but if i'm saying bone is made up of calcium let us see what exactly form is calcium found in okay bone shows a hard matrix okay naturally the bone matrix is hard why is it hard first of all the matrix of the bone is given a word which is called as osseen it's called as what it's called as osseen this is due to or this hardness of the bone is because there is deposition of a salt which mineral salt that salt is called as hydroxyapatite what is it called as hydroxyapatite we know it should contain none other than calcium so look over here children there is calcium here okay so that ca10 po4 twice phosphates and oh twice okay this is the whole formula for hydroxyapatite that is nothing but the mineral salt which is present in bone which makes the matrix so hard and tough all right now we come to the structure of the bone all right when we see a, when we take over here this is like a cross section taken of the bone okay we can see that first can you see that there are individual this is like one big unit which is there okay the similarly like this one big unit you are seeing here there are going to be several of these similar units which are placed one near the other they are extremely near each other now because this is a unit of a bone can i call it as an osteon remember osteo word was for bone this is a unit of a bone so i can call it as osteon okay osteon can also be given another name which we commonly call as haversian systems remember one thing more commonly the word used is haversian system so no matter how much the length of the bone is that is how long this one haversian system will be similarly there will be several haversian systems which are placed extremely near each other all right so these haversian systems come together they are compactly placed and they are forming the bone structure 
Now, when we see this matrix, which is made up of Havergen systems, let's see when we take over here. What I'd like you to do is right now, this over here is a three dimensional figure. Let us just take a small slice, which is only the top portion. I only want to concentrate on that top portion here. Can you see that that top portion has got a central part over here and that central part over there. Okay, let's give another color to it that central part over there can you see that there is a red blood vessel and a blue blood vessel there so that means that in that whole haversion system this is the whole haversion system inside the haversion system there is a canal in the center too so in that in that haversion system the central canal that is there will be known as the haversion canal so when I only take a section of this top portion, only the top portion, then children, this is how it looks like. Okay, so this structure over here is how that how that whole haversion system is looking like from above. This is just a two dimensional figure. And do you remember in between I told you that there were blood vessels over there. So one blood vessel would be a artery here and another blood vessel over here would be a vein. Alright, so this is that central canal that we were talking about or it can also be called as a haversion canal. So until now what we saw is when I'm talking about a bone, the bone has compact structures which are called as haversion systems. Now each haversion system has got a central haversion canal over here. That's what this structure is, the haversion canal. Alright, now in that haversion canal, what all structures do we find? We find arteries, we find veins, and we also find uh, nerves over there too. All right, so we have arteries, veins, and nerves. And children, the artery and the vein are the reasons why the bone stays alive because it gets nourishment, it gets oxygen. But then the nerves are the reason why whenever you break a bone, this gives rise to pain. Aren't fractures extremely painful? That's because there is a nerve supply there too. All right. Okay, so now what we see here ahead, the matrix of the bone is completely made up of these sing single units called as osteons or haversion systems. Now, the haversion systems here, first let's see here. The haversion system has got a central place haversion canal. Alright, so there is a central place haversion canal. Then we see that outside the canal, are you able to see that there are these cells here? Okay. So these cells are none other than bone cells. And if they are bone cells, then what name can I give them? Cells of bone. Can I call these cells as osteocytes? Okay, these are called as osteocyte. And children, similar to how we did cartilage, the same way here also, the osteocytes are located inside small spaces. Now, if they are in small spaces, may I call those spaces as, do you remember the name of the spaces? Those spaces are going to be called as lacunae. Alright, so in one haversion system, there is a central haversion canal. That canal has blood vessels and has nerves too. Outside the canal, there is a matrix present. Okay, now in that matrix, the first thing that we are observing is that there are spaces. What are the spaces called as? Those spaces are called as lacunae. What is inside the spaces? Bone cells. And what are those bone cells called as? They are known as osteocytes. All right, now we also see that those osteocytes are connected to each other. All right, they're connected to each other. Also, can you see that? The connections that you are seeing, can you see a pattern in them? Can you see that those connections are in the form of rings? Can you see that? So we can see that the, in these haversion systems, the matrix is found in rings altogether. All right. That matrix which is found in rings, the whole matrix over here is going to be given a name and we can call it as that matrix region, we can call it as lamellae. We'll call it as lamellae. So now we have three new things that we have learned right now. The first being that the, have, the bone is made up of several of those haversion systems. Each haversion system has a central haversion canal. Inside the canal, we have blood vessels and we have nerves. 
outside the canal we have matrix the matrix is found to be in circles and those circles have got spaces all right and those spaces are called as lacunae what are they called as lacunae lacunae contains cells bone cells what are they known as they are known as osteocytes all right so now children today i just gave you a brief introduction to bone we have completed the dense regular dense irregular connective tissue and now we will we have started with we've completed cartilage we've started with bone bone has many new terminologies so i am carrying forward this to the next lecture as well until now whatever words we have done i hope you've taken screenshots of the cartilage tissue that we have talked about and in cartilage please do write these down in your notebooks not only the cartilage tissue points but even about the different types of cartilages we saw we saw that there was hyaline there was fibrous and there was elastic too all right remember the examples which are more important for mcqs then we started off with bone all right bone has some difficult terminologies so i will be continuing with this in the next lecture as well and until then whatever doubts you are having on our on our application on our website please do ask those doubts please come to the yupmaster app and ask those doubts so that i personally can handle those doubts and answer them as soon as possible all right so until our next lecture do stay home do stay safe and keep the studying away All right bye bye take care